Spiders are a bit of a divisive issue. Some people find these creatures completely fascinating and even sometimes rather beautiful, but for others, a spider is nothing short of their very worst nightmare. Which category are you in? Are you an arachnophobe or an arachnophile? Let's have a closer look at some of the more unusual creatures of the spider world. From a spider that looks like a boring old stick to another one that's cute as a Muppet, here are 20 spiders that are only born once in a thousand years. Or more often than that, but I think we're just trying to sound dramatic. Number 20. The Cobalt Blue Tarantula The Cobalt Blue Tarantula is a species of big and hairy spider that's native to Myanmar and can also be found just over the border in Thailand. Nature doesn't really adhere to political borders after all. It's actually a medium-sized tarantula, yes terrifyingly, these things can be even bigger than this, and it has a leg span of about 5 inches. Although it's known as the Cobalt Blue, this spider isn't exactly what you might call a bright blue, but Rather, it has a beautiful exotic blue sheen, which catches the light on its silky body. They are, however, rarely seen out in the open. These spiders are what is known as fossorial, meaning that they like to dig and spend a large amount of time underground, only coming up to the surface for specific reasons. These tarantulas keep deep burrows and generally live most of their lives inside of them, only really venturing out to get food much like the modern internet adult human in many ways. It's hard to know just how rare the species may be because they're not listed as such by the IUCN, but they are not seen very frequently on the account of their underground living antisocial habits. But if you do see one, it might be best to not poke it or anything. They can be aggressive when they feel threatened and will bite in order to defend themselves. This bite is painful and venomous and they're likely to bite multiple times in quick succession. The result of a bite from a a cobalt blue tarantula is usually a selection of nausea, muscle cramps, excessive sweating, and occasionally even breathing difficulty, which is not the most fun experience ever, to be honest. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Twig Spider the twig spider hails from Australia, you know, where there are basically all the creepiest and most deadly creatures that you can imagine, and then a few extra as well. It turns out, though, that the twig spider is actually one of the least scary of Australia's arachnid offerings. Although there are so many spiders in Australia just waiting around for a chance to murder you, the twig spider isn't up to anything much at all. It actually seems as though it's just trying to pretend that it isn't even there. You know, looking as much like a twig as possible, and just trying to blend in. These spiders are long and thin, and their bodies are usually about half an inch in length, and they can vary in color from brown to cream to greenish. They set a snare of silk threads to catch their prey, which is usually other spiders and some insects. And when the unsuspecting victim wanders into the trap, the twig spider will descend from above and rapidly sets to work of wrapping the captured creature in silk. They're not venomous though and won't do you any harm, but the trouble is there are a bazillion other spiders with other ideas down there in Australia. Number 18. Scorpion-Tailed Spider this weird and wonderful creature is basically just what it sounds like. It's a spider with a scorpion-esque tail. These spiders are part of the orb weaver family, and that just means that they make webs in the shape of what we think of when we imagine a spider's web. The scorpion-tailed spider can be found across Australasia, surprise, surprise, and also in southern and eastern Asia. Females grow much bigger than the males and can be about a half an inch to one and a half inches long, whereas the male is a titchy little .0 seven nine inches in length microscopic even in fact only the females display the tail that makes these spiders so unique these tails however are completely harmless but the spider can bite although that's also a rare occurrence and only has minor localized discomfort and swelling 
So all in all, the scorpion-tailed spider, it's not a scorpion, nor is it in any way related, and it's also not dangerous even though its name gives it the sense that it might be up to no good. They're basically just weird looking little regular sorts of spiders. Number 17, Eight Spotted Crab Spider. This is such a cool looking spider with its bright yellow color and black spots. It's one of the most distinctive spiders that we've seen so far. In fact, it's so remarkable that it kind of looks like a children's toy rather than a real life arachnid. But it is real, and it is actually rather tiny. Females will grow to be around 20 millimeters in body length, and the tiddly little males are only about 4 millimeters long. They're also of a different and much less snazzy color. Crab spiders are, in general, pretty tiny, and therefore also not seen very frequently. This is a rather rare sort of the species, and has been observed in the wild where it appears to inhabit places where it can hang out in the yellow hibiscus. They're also held in captivity in some places, and have been seen eating bees, delicious no doubt. Number 16, Rockin' Bat Cave Mesh Weaver. Now, finally for your eyeballs, we have a species of spider that's actually incredibly rare. Native to Texas, this is one of the very few things there that is extra small. Oh, and it's actually known to live only in about eight or nine caves in the county in which it resides. And unsurprisingly as such, it's considered to be a rather endangered species. The Brocken Bat Cave Meshweaver has no eyeballs, they're pale in color, and the females generally range somewhere between 4.8 to 6.7 millimeters long. The original and namesake location of these spiders, Brocken Bat Cave, is now no longer accessible for any spider-bothering science types to go and study the arachnids. The cave itself is apparently filled in and is now on private property. So whether or not there are still any of these spiders there is not presently known. However, the discovery of the species during an excavation for a new highway in San Antonio definitely halted the $15 million project in its tracks. The spider must have friends in high places to have such power over the almighty highway constructions in Texas. Either that or it's just more luck than a cat. Number 15. Goliath Bird Eating Spider Even in your worst arachnophobic nightmares, you've probably never conceived of a spider quite like this horror. I mean, for Pete's sake, the thing is called a bird eater, which is a big clue to this creature's colossal size and general creepiness. With a body the size of a fist, eek, and spanning as much as 11 inches, the Goliath Bird Eater stalks the rainforests of Brazil, Venezuela, French Guiana, and Suriname. It is an ambush predator, and rather than hunting, the spider simply lies in wait for its prey to pass by before it lunges out and grabs it. And its favorite meal? Although named a bird eater, the spider actually prefers invertebrates, small rodents, or reptiles. However, they have been known to munch on the occasional bird. Apart from having a creepy name and some shady hunting tactics, the spider is also a night creeper. That's right, the biggest, scariest spider in the world comes out at night to feed, like some kind of gothic horror plot. And when you're all tucked into your bed tonight, try not to think about these monsters scuttling out of their burrows and doing unspeakable night creeper things. Number 14, Hercules Baboon Spider. Next up, we have a species that's believed to be almost extinct, the last specimen that was captured over 100 years ago and only exists in the Natural History Museum in London, England. Although if you were a spider who kept seeing your friends being captured as specimens, you might decide the best course of action is to make yourself scarce and hide away from any nosy parkers that point a magnifying glass in your direction. Anyways, this big hairy spider is known to have been a venomous tarantula that was found across Africa and, in particular, Nigeria. They would live in burrows and dry scrublands, grassy areas, and the woodlands of the savannah, and they would also dig themselves down deep underground to protect themselves from the heat. Even though very little information exists about these Hercules baboon spiders, they were, or perhaps still are, believed to be completely massive, bigger, it would seem, than the Brazilian wandering spider. But don't worry, I'll be getting to that beauty before the list is over. Lucky you. Number 13, Mirror Spider. 
Now, this is a really shiny spider, which is pretty cool, I think. Like a disco ball with eight legs, if you happen to like that sort of thing. Known as the mirror spider, or sometimes the sequin spider, this little arachnid has lots of silvery reflective patches all over their middles. These do actually look like the sort of bits of mirror that you might find glued all over an elephant-shaped ornament, or some sort of candlestick in a gift shop where the guy behind the counter is so high that his eyes are basically closed and the air is thick with chokingly high levels of Nag Champa. But that isn't this spider's fault now, so we shouldn't judge its slightly trashy choice of stoner outfit. These spiders are also harmless to humans, and they're kind of tiny as well, measuring between 2 to 5 millimeters. So there isn't much to be alarmed about, and even though they may look unusual, they're pretty tricky to spot. Number 12. Pikachu Spider Next up, here's a weird one for your eyeballs. This spider basically has the severed head of some alternative, slightly evil Pikachu strapped to its backside. And who can possibly understand what in the heck it's all about? Again, it's only the females that display this bright yellow bottom. Many scientists believe that the idea behind this adaptation is likely that it will attract attention and therefore also attract insects, so that the spider can lure the prey into the web. It seems to be relatively successful as well. A bunch of sciencey people colored in the yellow part of one of some of these spiders and then compared the success in catching prey between the ones with yellow bums and the colored in ones. The yellow ones, on average, were apparently more successful at attracting an insect and therefore eating. They also believe those spikes are designed to make it difficult for predators to eat them. Frankly, it looks kind of awkward and painful to swallow, so that seems like a fairly sensible adaptation, really. Number 11. Happy Face Spider these funny little happy face spiders are named because of the patterns on their backs, which form, yes you guessed it, a smiling face shape. Found only on four of the Hawaiian islands, these happy face spiders come in a variety of different colors and patterns. These patterns and such allow the spiders to blend in surreptitiously on the undersides of leaves. This is their preferred location to build their flimsy webs underneath of leaves in this way so that they can ambush their prey with ease, and they do it while smiling the entire time. Some of the spider's patterns look distinctly like a happy face, but some of the others have a rather frowny expression. In fact, the variety amongst these spiders is almost endless. Number 10. Longhorned Orb Weaver this is another one of those rather spectacular looking spider, a bit like that Pikachu posterior one from before. Anyways, this is the long horned orb weaver, sometimes known as the curved spiny spider, and this extraordinary arachnid was first named, with something Latin and utterly unpronounceable, in 1793. The distinctive shape of the long horned orb weaver is what makes it so fascinating. It has, well, the females have, these crazy long horn like things that stick out of them. <laughs> and as well as those, they also have these unusually patterned and colored bodies. These parts of them can range from red to yellow and white, even through to black, but they're most distinctive on the account of those mad horns. As with all orb weavers, this spider will spin a web, just how you imagine it would look, but rather than waiting in the web for their prey, they tend to lie in wait nearby and capture the unsuspecting lunch in an opportunistic attack. Number 9. Chinese Hourglass Spider these spiders are known as the Chinese hourglass spider and have a specific body shape, which is what gives them their name, apparently. They have a truncated abdomen with a disc at the bottom, which displays a distinctive pattern. This disc resembles a coin, so they're also known in China as the money trapdoor spider. They're a species of trapdoor spider, meaning that they create a special trap by digging a burrow with a silk spun hinged trap door in order to ambush and catch their prey. These spiders do bite if you happen to upset them, but this is a low risk to humans as the bite is non-toxic. It still does hurt though, so it's best not to poke one till it gets annoyed. But that's a good motto for life, really. Going around poking things all willy-nilly is a surefire way to get yourself into trouble, so please don't do that. Number 8. Peacock Spider Australia 
Well, they've got a lot of spiders. In fact, they've basically got all the spiders, especially the most bitey and poisonous and murderous sorts. So the discovery of yet another species of spider is not a very surprising thing, honestly, but here we are. This time around, we're looking at a species of peacock spider, a member of a genus which now has at least 92 members of species amongst its numbers. This one is rather snazzy and it's bright and orange striped, and it has a bit of a look of the clownfish about it. So that's nice for fans of Finding Nemo who want a little bit of Disney action in their scary spiders. For this reason, the species has been dubbed Meritus Nemo. Up close, its multiple green eyes and hairy legs give it a little bit of a less Disney appeal and more of a Swamp Thing sort of toxic waste mutant vibe. But hey, what do I know about naming things? I just heard about this one myself. Apparently, Australia has so many flipping species and so much space filled with natural stuff that it's estimated that only about 30% of its biodiversity has actually been officially documented, meaning that there may be loads of species out there that nobody's even heard of and they're going to need names. What would you name a new species of spider if you happen to find one? Would you be super vain and name it after yourself or perhaps you'd name it after your nana or your pet guinea pig twinkle? Let me know all about your fabulous thoughts on the matter in the comments section down below. Number 7. Brown Recluse one of the most venomous spiders in the United States, the recluse can be mainly found across the western and southern states, but they are fairly far flung, so don't imagine that you're safe just because you live in the middle. These spiders can be found as far north as Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, and Nebraska, so they're pretty much everywhere. You may know the recluse by a different name because they're often called violin spiders or fiddleback spiders on the account of the shape on the front of their bodies. But the thing to really watch out for with these creepy crawlies is their super nasty bite. Yes, these spiders have a necrotic bite, meaning that it causes death to body tissue. The venom of the recluse spider's bite destroys the blood vessels around the site of the bite and can make a massive ulcer on the skin. The trouble with this is that these wounds can be extremely slow to heal, which makes them vulnerable to infections, and this is what can result in the death of a victim of the spider's bite. So that's utterly charming, a long, slow death. Although it's important to say that deaths from these spider bites is actually rare, but I would still be very careful if I were you. Number 6. Yellow Sack Spider Another spider with one of those fun necrotic bites. Huzzah! The yellow sack spider is native to the United States and can be found all the way south in New Mexico and even South America as well. These nasty biters are venomous and they can often be found hanging around inside of people's homes, the cheeky things. Anyways, if you do happen to find one of these arachnids indoors, it's best not to fiddle around with it as a bite from one of these yellow sack spiders can actually give humans an especially unpleasant lesion on their skin. This is a redact of the cytotoxin that the bite contains, and that's some gross necrotic stuff, which both destroys the cells and impairs the cell function. Even though an extreme reaction to a bite is rare, it's actually still possible to get a red swollen welt where the spider bites. And these ladies, they're not shy about it either. A female yellow sack spider will bite first and ask questions later if she's defending her eggs. Actually, she won't ask any questions. She's a spider after all. Number 5. Red Widow Spider Similar to the other varieties of widow spiders, the red widow has a venomous bite that is not very pleasant, but with medieval treatment, it's less likely to do you in. Obviously, as with all these venomous sorts, if you're an older person or especially frail or indeed a baby, then a spider bite may have more serious consequences. Found in the palmetto scrublands of central and southern Florida, the red widow can be mostly seen minding her own business, feeding on insects, and protecting her eggs. But if you do happen to threaten those eggs, well, that's when you're likely to run into trouble. The general habitat of the red widow spider does seem to be expanding into new territory, which means there may be increased opportunities for humans to accidentally interact with them and get a bite which will have such exciting symptoms as nausea, pain and cramping, but rarely death. So that's alright then, hopefully anyways. Number 4. Wolf Spider 
Generally, the wolf spider bite is not fatal to humans, unless that victim is allergic to spider bites, that is. But do you actually know if you're allergic to spider bites? Is it a risk that you really want to take? The wolf spider is a fast, aggressive hunter known for chasing and pouncing on their prey, much like their namesakes. And although they're mostly interested in running around outside catching prey, these spiders are not averse to biting humans if they find themselves threatened, and most bites from the wolf spider are administered in self-defense. The bite of this species is venomous, but they're also not considered generally dangerous unless you have the allergies. But the bite sight will become kind of hideous on the account of the sheer size of this creepy crawly's fangs. Their huge fangs will cause trauma to the skin where they penetrate, and the venom will cause itchiness. It is a painful bite, something like a bee sting, but the real issue is usually the speed and suddenness of the attack. That's going to give most people the willies. Number 3. Brazilian Wandering Spiders the distinctly sinister-sounding wandering spider has the dubious privilege of being considered the world's most venomous spider by the Guinness Book of World Records. But just how bad could that really be? Well, it turns out that it can be very bad indeed. So if you yourself are wandering the Brazilian forest, be careful where you step. These extraordinary arachnids don't build webs to catch their prey. They wander the forest floor during the night and then hunt their prey. The scary spider is a fan of both ambush hunting and the classic direct attack, although they mainly hunt and eat other spiders and insects. These creatures are also known to munch on mice, reptiles, and amphibians. And so they won't bite a human in order to eat it as such, but it will bite if it feels threatened or surprised and it's going to hurt. You should probably know that these things have found their way to places all over the world by hiding their egg sacs in bunches of bananas, the sneaky so-and-sos. In fact, one family in London had to have their house fumigated after an infestation of baby wandering spiders popped in for tea. They were lucky to avoid being bitten by a bigger version. A bite from a Brazilian wandering spider usually goes like this. It begins with extreme burning pain where the victim was bitten, followed by sweating and goosebumps. And then the nasty stuff, which can include high or low blood pressure and fast or slow heartbeat. This varies as the body tries to figure out how to handle the systemic attack. Then a combination of sickness, stomach pains, vertigo, blurred vision, hypothermia, heavy sweating, and convulsions as the shock sets in. Of course, the severity of the reaction is going to depend on how much venom is actually in the bite, but you can't really tell that until it's too late. The good news? Well, if you're unlucky enough to be bitten by one of these spiders, you should seek immediate medical treatment, and that's probably going to fix you right up. The things they can do with anti-venom and all that are really amazing these days. Number 2. Diving Bell Spider Here's an unusual one for you and your lucky eyeballs. The diving bell spider is one of only a handful of spiders that are known to live almost entirely underwater. They're also known, rather unoriginally, as the water spider, but that lacks the romance of its other name. Other than its propensity for underwater life, the diving bell spider has all the features you would expect to find in a terrestrial spider. They come up to the surface for air once a day, but other than that, they're kept busy below the surface. Their abdomens are hairy and they use this hair to capture an air bubble around the middle. It uses plants as attachment sites when it dives down into the water and anchors its bubble nest there as well. So they mostly live in ponds, lakes, marshes, and slow moving streams. They eat crustaceans and aquatic insects and are no threat to humans, except if they bite you. It's going to hurt and may even cause a fever. Otherwise, you'll probably be fine. Unless of course you happen to be a delicious water dwelling insect. Number 1. The Jumping Spider now, if you think spiders are super creepy, then perhaps you haven't had the opportunity to take a close-up look at the jumping spider. There are some people who actually think these little guys are kind of cute. They look pretty fluffy and characterful, not unlike a Muppet to be honest, but these are the largest family of spiders in the world and they're estimated to be more than 6,380 species and they vary in cuteness quite considerably. Even though they are quite varied in appearance, all jumping spiders have four pairs of eyes, which includes one pair of massive eyes at the front, and therefore they have awesome eyesight. 
They are known to stalk and hunt prey on foot, they don't make webs, and they ambush their prey like the orb weaver, but rather they jump out and capture the prey, hence their name. They can also jump up to 6.3 inches in one leap, and like Spider-Man, they often spin a silk thread to anchor them before they go. Jumping spiders tend to be really tiny, but they come in a massive variety of colors and patterns, ranging from blue to red and yellow, all the way to through to black and white, and they generally measure half an inch or less and are usually a bit furry. They're found all over the world, living in tropical and temperate forests, scrublands, grasslands, and deserts, and are usually most commonly found outdoors, but are also keen to set up home near a door or window of a building, as there's a greater chance of catching prey in those areas. And so there you have it, a whole lot of interesting and wildly varied spiders. Let's hope that you're not arachnophobic though, or that won't have done you any good at all. Which of these cool spiders have you actually seen, and which ones do you hope you never cross paths with? As always, let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.